people they don't need to run on data somewhere and after something like that working as an assistant professor in department of mechanical engineering srm institute of science and technology india along with uh, other uh, researchers uh, professor r ganga vidhi professor hasan kotan and professor r marimuthu we did in research uh, to produce the hydrogen by using the pvd system so the title of this present uh, article is experimental studies of novel hydrogen production system in the integrated with nano fluid based pvd system so in this presentation i am going to present these are the topics the first one is why we need the hydrogen fuel and then uh, what are the different methods we can produce the hydrogen then uh, what is the, what are the uh, objective of this uh, article or the research and what kind of uh, experimental setup i used in this research uh, what kind of uh, pvd module the specification of the pvd module used in this research i also uh, i'm going to give in this presentation uh, and what uh, the results obtained during this results uh, what uh, and uh, the discussion we made in this article also the going to present in this presentation finally i will conclude the research so the first one is why we need the hydrogen fuel as uh, as we know very well while using the in the, in the past few few years the uh, usage of fossil fuel based vehicles or uh, fossil fuel based systems are uh, rapidly increasing so because of this the usage of fossil fuels uh, the need of fossil fuel is uh, rapidly increasing at the same time the availability of the fossil fuel is decreasing day by day and uh, the other in, uh, impact of the fossil fossil fuels on the environment is uh, also increasing so while using the fossil fuel we will get some unwanted gases hydrogen nitrogen uh, hydrogen hi uh, carbon monoxide hydro hydrocarbon so this will uh, affect the human health so because of this many res research is going on to uh, find the alternative fuels find the fuels uh, alternate to the fossil fuels or uh, some other research is going on instead of fossil fuels uh, they use the electric vehicles and uh, here um, uh, many many research is going on to uh, use the hydrogen as the fuel instead of fossil fuels and uh, what are the different methods we can uh, produce the hydrogen so the uh, hydrogen can be produced from the fossil fuels and as well as the renewable energy sources so in the last slide i mentioned the uh, uh, drawbacks of the fossil fuel so because of this uh, we i am uh, i am selecting a renewable energy sources to produce the hydrogen and uh, in the renewable energy sources uh, by using the renewable energy sources we can produce the hydrogen in so many methods by uh, by using the thermochemical method or by splitting the water into hydrogen and uh, oxygen that is the electro electrolysis process so uh, compared to the thermochemical the electrolysis or uh, water splitting method is very very simple and the cost effective method so that i uh, i i have chosen this method in this uh, research so these are the objective of my research the first one is uh, here i am using the nano fluid as the heat transfer fluid so for, for that i need to we cannot uh, we cannot disperse the copper oxide uh, uh, or by any nano particles in the uh, waste fluid so we need to use specific methods uh, or for example sonication method or uh, uh, stirrer method so uh, that is very important because we need, uh, we need to uh, uh, prepare the high, uh, copper oxide nano fluid with uh, uh, less agglomeration and high dispersion uh, so that uh, that is very very important uh, that is my uh, main objective to prepare the to prepare and study of thermophysical property thermophysical properties means uh, how the thermal conductivity is uh, uh, varying from the waste fluid uh, for this copper oxide you know, uh, fluid and the next one is uh, we need uh, while using the water splitting method we need the uh, electric electricity so to produce the electricity i am using the pv module 
So uh, while using the PV module uh, during the energy conversion, that means the solar radiation into the electrical energy, more heat is generated. So that heat will affect the performance of the PV module. That means the electrical output will decrease while increasing the temperature. So uh, I am using the thermal collector. I am attaching the thermal collector uh, uh, on that side of the thermal, uh, PV module. So the thermal, in the thermal collector, I, uh, uh, I made the thermal collector uh, by using the copper tube. So that copper tube is uh, uh, shaped in the spiral shape, bent, bent into that spiral shape. So that is attached with the back side of the PV module. So uh, while, while circulating the uh, heat transfer fluid in the thermal collector, it will absorb the heat so that we can improve the electrical power output that is the electrical efficiency of the PV module. And that is also the one of the objective of this research. And then next one is to analyze the thermal and uh, electrical performance. So while circulating different heat transfer fluids with the different flow rates, how the electrical efficiency is increasing or uh, how the thermal uh, efficiency of the thermal collector is uh, increasing. Uh, so that also I analyzed in this research. And finally, by using the electricity, uh, by using the electricity produced by the PV module, uh, that is connected with the uh, electro, uh, electrolysis, electrolyzer and um, uh, because of that how the hydrogen production rate is, all, is uh, varying, that, uh, that is the, our main objective. So this is the experimental uh, vectorial view of my experimental setup. So here I am using the uh, PV module, so under the PV module I am using the thermal collector. So in this thermal collector I am, uh, I am circulating the heat uh, heat exchanger fluid uh, that is the water is stored in this uh, uh, tank so that uh, water or the nano fluid is circulated in the uh, thermal collector so uh, and here I, I am measuring the voltage what is the voltage output what is the current uh, value by using the uh, thermal temperature and voltage indicator I am using the temperature sensor on the top side and the bottom side how the temperature of the surface temperature is varying that also I measured during this research and this is the uh, block diagram for my research so here uh, this is the PV module uh, along with the spiral flow collector and here I am using the compressor and uh, in this research I am using air as the heat transfer fluid, water as the heat transfer fluid and copper oxide uh, water also in a uh, heat transfer fluid. So by using uh, for producing the compressed air, I am using the compressor and uh, the, that uh, produced compressed air is going into the uh, system, a PVT system uh, by through this blue color line and, uh, and a nano fluid tank of the water is uh, uh, enters into the PVT module uh, along this line. And here I am using the data acquisition system to measure the real time uh, uh, temperatures and the voltage and currents uh, all the, uh, and all the values uh, are stored in the personal computers. And here I am using the uh, I am recirculating the water uh, and the nano fluid because the cost of the nano particles are very, very high. We cannot uh, uh, we need to recirculate again and again. Uh, and for that I am using the uh, the outlet of the uh, thermal collector uh, heat the temperature of the heat transfer fluid at the outlet side is uh, high so we cannot use directly into the nano fluid tank uh, for the next uh, cycle so we need to remove the heat for that purpose i'm using the heat exchanger unit and the specification of the pv module uh, i used uh, in this research is given in this table so the model of the PV, uh, PV module and the PV panel and what is the maximum power we can produce by the PV module that is the 50 watts and what is the rated current, rated uh, voltage and open circuit voltage, short circuit current, uh, all these things uh, given here and uh, uh, these are the formulas I used during the research. So this is the formula to calculate the electrical efficiency. So electrical efficiency P in Thai that is the power output and IS is the short circuit uh, current and AP is the uh, area of the PV module. And uh, to find the thermal efficiency QU, QU is 
with uh, nothing but utilize the heat uh, useful heat or utilize the heat uh, developed by uh, yes short circuit current and ac uh, is the thermal area of the thermal collector and to find the hydrogen uh, rate yield rate uh, uh, q h2 is equal to v h2 divided by t v h2 is nothing but the volume of the hydrogen produced t is the time and uh, to find the volume of the hydrogen this formula is used and uh, another formula is used uh, to, uh, to uh, find the quantity of nano particle how much quantity of nano particle i need to use for that particular volume concentration i used uh, this formula so w weight of the uh, copper oxide divided by density of copper oxide and uh, divided by uh, weight of the copper oxide divided by density of copper oxide plus uh, weight of water water as the base flame and density of water so by using this uh, we can calculate how much amount of uh, uh, copper oxide nano particles we require to produce the 0 0.05 uh, volume concentration nano fluid and 0 0.1 volume percentage uh, nano fluid and uh, uh, by using these the experimental setup and the base formulas i i got some results so that results are uh, that results are given given in this uh, upcoming slides so the first one is uh, by using this experimental setup i measure the thermal efficiency and in this graph shows the variation of the thermal uh, efficiency with respect to the time and also here i uh, with respect, uh, with respect to percentage of volume concentration or uh, for different uh, heat transfer fluids that is the PVT with the air and PVT with water and PVT with the nano fluid. Uh, here I am using three types of nano fluids that is 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and 0 0.05 volume concentration. So uh, from this graph it can be observed uh, while using the uh, nano fluid along uh, with 0.0 volume concentration uh, with 40 liter per hour while, uh, while circulating uh, uh, while, while increasing the flow rate more quantity of fluid enters into the thermal collector so it will absorb more heat from the PV module so that the thermal efficiency will increase while increasing the volume concentration as well as increasing the flow rate and here the, uh, as we know very well at morning 8 o'clock the temperature of the solar radiation is very very less till 12 o'clock the solar radiation is gradually increasing after 12 o'clock uh, the solar radiation is uh, slightly decreasing so that we are getting the maximum thermal efficiency at 12 o'clock for all the conditions and the next one is uh, we found the electrical efficiency by using the formula uh, and uh, in that formula the power divided by uh, area of PV module into IS uh, short circuit current. So, uh, this graph shows the variation of the electrical efficiency. So, uh, at 12 o'clock, we are getting the maximum uh, power output, and uh, at the same time, uh, while using the uh, if you see this PV module, uh, PV module uh, is giving only less electrical output. So as I told earlier, without using the thermal collector, more heat is generating in the PV module. That heat will affect the performance of the PV module. So that we are getting very, very low uh, electrical output. And while using the air, uh, the thermal conductivity of the air is very, very uh, less so that we are getting the very close value of the PV module but while increasing the water and water based copper oxide nano fluid the variation of the electrical efficiency uh, uh, will be in, will also increase so I am getting the maximum electrical efficiency of 12 mm or 0 0.02 volume uh, fraction of uh, nano, nano fluid based polar and the next one is the total efficiency. Total efficiency is nothing but uh, it is a sum of uh, uh, electrical efficiency and uh, uh, thermal efficiency. So, uh, 
obviously we will get the maximum uh, total efficiency for the 0.2 volume concentration of the copper uh, oxide you know to be based in PVD system and this graph shows the variation of the hydrogen yield rate so uh, the hydrogen yield rate and the electrolysis process we are giving uh, we need to give the electrical input so that electrical input is using to split the uh, water into water mo uh, hydrogen molecules and the uh, oxygen molecules so that but here uh, the, we are getting the uh, power output, maximum power output at 12 months of the water uh, while circulating nano fluid with the 0 0.2 volume concentration into the thermal collector. So uh, because of that reason, we are getting the maximum uh, hydrogen yield rate for the uh, 0.2 percentage volume concentration of the nano fluid. And uh, while, uh, while completing this research, I got uh, some important points. So that important points are, con uh, are, uh, are uh, summarized in this conclusion slides. So uh, the first one is uh, that thermal conductivity ratio. So obviously, uh, while uh, uh, using the nano fluids, nano particles uh, uh, displaced to fluids. Uh, 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 while, while increasing the temperature, the movement of the random movement of the molecules are uh, very very high. That is the Brownian motion. So that Brownian motion uh, will uh, improve the thermal conductivity of the uh, nano fluids. So because of that, we are getting the thermal higher thermal conductivity ratio. The thermal conductivity ratio is nothing but the thermal conductivity of the nano fluid divided by the thermal conductivity of the base fluid. So uh, from in this research, we observed uh, 1.013 and 1.037 and 1.004 thermal conductivity ratio values for uh, copper oxide nano uh, fluids uh, with 0 0.05 and 0 0.1 uh, and 0 0.2 percentage volume concentrations at 4 hours sonication time. While increasing the sonication time, the nanoparticles are uh, uniformly dispersed in the fluids so that we are getting the maximum ma uh, maximum thermal conductivity value uh, while uh, with increasing the sonication time. So in this research we did the, uh, uh, we measured the thermal conductivity for different sonication type. We got the maximum value for the 4 hour sonication time. So uh, uh, in this research the nano fluids are preferred with 4 hour sonication. And similarly, uh, as we know very well, while uh, adding some particles in the base fluids, uh, obviously the uh, viscosity will increase. So, uh, but while comparing the, uh, while adding the nano sized particles, the viscosity is increasing, but the difference uh, difference is very very less. That is a negligible one. So that here, uh, uh, these these are the viscosity values in megapascal second. For four hours sonication time, uh, uh, we got in this result. And uh, final, uh, finally, the peak, the highest thermal and electrical output was obtained. The, the highest thermal efficiency was uh, as 79 percentage, and the highest electrical output uh, of 13.5 percentage uh, are obtained while using the 0 0.2 volume percentage uh, copper oxide you know, uh, fluids in the PVD system and similarly the hydrogen yield rate of about 10.3 percentage and 12.1 percentage and 16.5 percentage were obtained uh, for solar powered PVD system and 0.2 uh, while, while using the 0.2 volume concentration kind of rates uh, at, the rate, at the same time while increasing the flow rate and uh, we are getting the maximum, uh, we are, we are, uh, the hydrogen yield rate is increasing while increasing the flow rate. So here you can see 10.3 percentage and here you can see 13.9 percentage. So uh, that means the uh, flow rate is one of the important parameter that affects the hydrogen flow rate. And, and these are the references I used in this uh, research. Thank you.